impossible to believe the way this thing has gone. So we can take this in a couple of different directions. Let's start with the quarterbacks. Dan, if you're making that decision, who's the quarterback of the Bears next week? Yeah, this is easy, Nick Foles. I, I was waiting for the opportunity to go to him if I'm Matt Nagy because we were a 2-0 football team. But we weren't a 2-0 football team because of the way that Mitchell Trubisky was playing. And it was just a matter of time. He opened the door, and Nick Foles not only walked through, but he stepped right through it and took over this football team. Trubisky, Greeny, the bad habits that he had success with caught up to him. The poor mechanics, the inability to see the football field, the lack of willingness to throw the ball downfield when the opportunity presented itself. The turnovers just became too much of a big deal, and Matt Nagy had to make the decision, I can no longer allow the quarterback to hurt our football team. And listen, we have to credit Nick Foles. He came in, rocked that tinted visor, and took this team down the field three times to win the football game. Mitchell Trubisky, barring injury to Nick Foles, will never play again for the Chicago Bears. It sounds like what Dan is saying is that playing the quarterback position got in the way of Mitchell Trubisky playing quarterback. Mm. Because he said basically he did nothing well. Yeah. I mean, you can go back to the second half of this game against the New York Giants last week. There's the Bradbury interception, the Julian Love interception. I believe that Matt Nagy and the Chicago Bears came into this game and said, if he doesn't play well, or play well early, he is out of here. I think they talked about that before they named him the starter, that they can move the Nick Foles when they need yeah, Rex, what did the quick hook again they're 2-0 and and it's just not even a, a, a whole game yesterday what did that quick hook tell you it told me exactly what Ryan was talking about they were waiting mm -hmm. hey I don't care when is it when is it <laughs> oh there it is now we're gonna go get him but that's that's exactly what it was but guys Nick Foles has never been the answer as a starting quarterback I don't believe he's going to be the answer now and the durability also is a, is a problem and he could have thrown three interceptions in the in this game as well so yeah. to me I'm not buying it I like the fact that he got rid of the visor later in the game so mm -hmm. that made a big difference but <laughs> here's what's going to happen and I, and I know Bear fans won't want to hear it at some point he's going to come back in because Foles will not stay healthy. That's what he's shown through the years. So that's one side of the story yesterday. The other one is can only really be described in a sports parlance as a tragedy. The Falcons back to back losses these two weeks are as bad as anything we've ever seen. Yeah absolutely. It's, it's unacceptable Greeny and, and it's hard when, when you do this job and Rex is, was a great head coach in this league. You don't want to call for people's jobs. But the fact that Dan Quinn keeps getting opportunity after opportunity to fail since failing in the Super Bowl against the New England Patriots is crazy to me. You can't look this unprepared. You can't look this scared of success because that's what the Atlanta Falcons are. They get up and they're scared of success. The other team says we can always come back because it's the Atlanta Falcons. And the Atlanta Falcons says we can always lose because we're the Atlanta Falcons. And that starts at the top. What do you say, Rex? What, what, what do you say about this very specific little moment of failure unlike anything we've ever seen? Yeah, I mean, but we all feel it as fans. It's the same thing. It's like, look, they're going to swallow the olive, and they do. <laughs> and here's the other thing. The play calling, come on. Yeah, I get it. Oh, we had a deep ball. We just missed it only if we would have hit it. Yeah, how about you get a first down? Yeah. That's what you need. They don't understand it. They're trying to pitch it way down the field. We need first downs and, and, and keep that clock rolling. And, and that's how, how the hell do you blow 25-point leads back-to-back. -back. It never happens. And, and, man, I feel for Dan Quinn. I feel for everybody. But at the same time, you got to understand your team has absolutely zero conference, confidence in finishing. I mean, you need to come out with Mariano Rivera or something. <laughs> Play Sandman. Do something. <laughs> you got to change it. When you say it literally never happens, that is actually true. What happened to them in consecutive weeks, Dan Orlovsky, has literally never happened. Final thought. Yeah, Dan Quinn's done in Atlanta, and the Falcons team have cashed out on him. Greeny, unfortunately, I was part of some coaches getting fired in the NFL, and once you as a team on the sideline, in-game, start pointing fingers and arguing with each other and, you know, creating these little clicks, it's done. This team is cashed out. They have no confidence in their head coach anymore, and this is too talented of a, talented of a roster to sit, be sitting at 0-3. And so the question is, why are you 0-3? And I can only point the finger at one person. Dan Quinn, the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, should no longer be their head coach. It's tough to sit here and say it, but it is very hard to draw any other reasonable conclusion. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.